Hello everyone and welcome back to the video from Dracon. I know it's been a while, I've been busy, but you know what, we're getting back into it. So today we're going to go over the Ember Rock. As you can see here on the table, it is a product of the Critical Role line from WizKids. Now, do I know much about Critical Role? I have watched their shows on occasion and they're pretty good. And um, yeah, I just had to get this guy because I've been looking for a giant bird and I figured the Ember Rock here could work for a good multi-purpose based on its figure's design, at least, and such like that. But we're going to take a look here. And as you can see, though, this box, when I got it, was in better day. It could have been better days. I think it got beat up during shipping, or it's just been on the shelf for a long time. And there is some more proof of that. Yeah, so if we look at the back here, you will notice there is a couple of sales signs on this bad boy. It apparently had been sitting on the shelf from wherever it came from. And it had been sitting there for a while. So it dropped down. When I got it, it was actually around uh, like 40 bucks, and then it was on sale for a percentage off, which dropped it down to a lovely $35, which I was like, okay, that's pretty reasonable. So I literally jumped on the chance to buy it, and I wasn't super worried about the box, because as long as the Mini itself was in great shape, we'll be looking good here. Because, I mean, as you can see by the box, they're, it's an impressive box. It looks nice and all that good stuff. has some art of the creature. But we're going to mostly care about the Mini as you're inside. So let's open this bad boy up and take a look inside of it. And here we have the Ember Rock in its glory on the, my rotating table going around. Now, as you can see with the Ember Rock, it is getting a lot of reflection from my lights. So sorry about that. They're a little bit bright, I guess. I don't really have a way to turn them down at the moment. Let me actually try something. There we are, folks. Sorry, I had to change my lighting out because, uh, <laughs> as you can see, there's a lot of translucent plastics used in the here and some parts on the wings there we got these lovely little translucent wing areas and uh they were reflecting the light like crazy as you can see when i originally did that it's it was too bright but i had to change the lighting out to a lower setting and this is probably the lowest i could get where it wasn't super bright and as you can see on the back we're still getting reflectionary little shine so best i could do so my apologies but as you can see here, this is a very large and lovely miniature. I don't hate the design. I have to give WizKids per, like credit on this. It looks lovely. The black tipped wings look good. I actually don't hate the blue head. Now, I know some people are probably like, well, but the blue head probably looks stupid, right? Well, no. Actually, there's a reason that. If you know anything about how fire works, blue flames are actually hotter than the red flame. So having a, red, a burning hot head makes sense for a flame creature. Now, how does this work in the attention of being a rock? You know, the bird of the giants, the creatures they made to fight the dragons in the Great War. You know, a good question. It looks still pretty good. Honestly, you could easily use this as a giant rock miniature. It's gargantuan size, which is proper for a full-grown rock. I mean... Would this also work if you were trying to use him as like a Lord of the Birds, maybe? Like, uh, this is the Grand Bird Emperor? Possibly as well. But there's one other lovely thing you could use this for, and that's a phoenix. A phoenix would be a lovely creature. We don't really get many good miniatures for those. And they are gargantuan fire elementals, so they're these giant firebirds. But we never really get a phoenix mini out there in any of the old miniatures to any of the new stuff so maybe in the future they might throw one out but until WizKids does if you're looking for a phoenix or a giant firebird to really make your party slightly terrified i would definitely recommend snagging this guy like i said i got mine for around 35 i know he goes for more than that normally but like i said uh his based on the stickers on his box it was a beat up i am gonna guess that honestly this guy had been sitting on the shelf for a while and uh the company was just like Look, we're going to put this on Amazon, we're going to discount it a bit, and we're going to sell this thing and get it out of our store. And that's probably fair. Probably most of the time, will people pick this up first bat? No. I'm going to be honest, probably not. If you're starting a campaign, this thing ain't going to be something you're picking up off the bat. You would think of this as like a late game boss, or like a, I'd like to say maybe a, com a friendly creature of the group if they like do a special ritual and it summons this creature to aid them in battle against the big bad, maybe. But it's still pretty good. Like, I honestly gotta say, for towards the lore of the giants and the dragons fighting and how D&D has gone about it, this could work good for that. And I say that because this creature is quite 
in scale with giants to an extent. Because rocks were supposed to be bigger they could carry giants on their back. Or they could pick up giants and carry them to play location. They also had to be big enough to grapple and fight with dragons. Is this creature big enough? Well, we're going to start the turntable here and get this thing to comparison. So let's do that. So here we have uh, the Great Fire Rock, or Ember Rock. I like to call it Fire Rock. It sounds cooler. Next to Mumlock. Now, this is a Reaper Bones miniature that I painted and got him all base. As you can see, he's, all, he's also a gargantuan creature. He's basically a titan. I use him as a titan, like, because in the lore, titans aren't all just humanoid giants. They actually do sometimes have animalistic features. So I figured a giant mammoth mumlock titan would be kind of cool. So I based him with a titan. But as you can see, next to the rock, would the rock be able to carry mumlock? No, there's no way. This guy weighs, like, multi-tons more than a mammoth. So there's no way it's going to carry him around. But could it fight him? Probably also not. I think Mumlock would be so strong, physically strong, you know, he'd probably grab this bird and uh, turn it into a quick thing of uh, chicken wings if he really wanted to. Or he could just pick up a giant boulder and throw it at it if it won't come at him and fight him. But it does have probably the ability to breathe fire, so, you know, it has probably some advantages over Mumlock. Aerial superiority and distance weaponry does probably give it an advantage. But considering Mumlock will be a titan, has a special weapon, who knows. Now getting past that, now, it looks good. Honestly, you could easily see Mumlock there and this Titan being actually together. Like, maybe that's a flaming wind out, like Master of the Skies, while Mumlock is the crushing Earth Master. And, like, together they could be a terrifying duo that could fight against the dragons in the war if, you know, they had taken part in it. And I think it'd be really cool to use them for such if you need to. But, yeah, I think Reaper Bones miniatures can hold up pretty good next to this bird. Especially ones that are also really big. So it definitely can hold its own next to those guys. So for Reaper Bones comparatively, yeah, this is a good good miniature. It looks good next to it. Let's try some other miniatures though, shall we? And compare something else. So here we have the Great Ember Rock sitting next to a Storm Giant that I had painted from the WizKids line. Uh, this is one of their like older ones. So this is not one of the Reaper Bones Black. This is the older Reaper Bones on the right there. And to the left, we have an old school model. This is actually one I really love that I got to add to the collection. And this is the Eldritch Giant. Now, the Eldritch Giants, as you know, are way more magically inclined. And honestly, I feel these guys are the ones that are going to use Ember Rocks in battle. If you're going to use them for just purely that, like a flaming rock, basically. Because Eldritch Giants are all about that magic, man. They love magic. Sorcery, magic, right up their alley. Merging it with things, they love all that stuff. Enchantments, all that kind of stuff. That's up their alley. That's what the Eldritch Giants want. So I think that like a giant flame bird of magic elemental energy would be something they wouldn't exactly say, oh man, what would I have used for that? No, they'd say, I'm going to keep that around either as a pet, a companion, or something like that. It just feels like it'd work around. Storm Giants would be another hand. Now, granted, the Reaper Bones giants they're a little off-sized from the old school the new ones are getting better and better in scaling like the bones black ones they're getting really good looking and i think those are where you really want to go for giants but i wouldn't say count the old ones out this works too because this could be a youthful storm giant having an ember rock basically take care of it or look over it maybe based on upon the uh, orders of its old masters who could be this giant's parents Telling him to keep an eye on their child till it grows to maturity so he can defend himself and then stay with him or whatever. Who knows? You know, lore creation for your games is endless, which is always awesome. But would this also work for a fiend? Like, how does this compare to other rocks, for instance? So here we have the uh, giant ember rock here next to a bunch of its fellow contemporary birds of the sky. And this will give us a good comparison of size because when we look at this big boy... He's still quite big. I mean, here we have the older school, I'd say more vintage uh, Wizards or Bandai, actually, or Hasbro's rock mini. And as you can see, it was a huge size creature back then. And that might have been how it was in older editions, but I like to use this as maybe this is a young rock, not fully matured yet, like an adolescent rock. You know, he's in that like uh, sub-adult category. And then we have the Skyjack Rock over there from the uh, <laughs> Ravnica set, which, you know, was a very um, interesting wave released combining the MTG world and D&D, &D, you know, aspect back in uh, that day for, you know, Wizard of the Coast. And it was a very controversial one. 
I don't hate it necessarily, but you know, I think they could have done it better because the Skyjack rocks here are not hard to get. So if you really need a rock badly and you don't care if it's super gargantuan, you can get yourself one of these Skyjacks. And I mean cheap. People sell them cheap all the time. They were super common in Ravnica. I have a couple of these guys from when I used to do the Ravnica box on the boxings. If you guys haven't seen those, go check them out I, on my channel. That was older in the day. And I say older, even though it was only like some years, but still, <laughs> still matters. We also have it next to the Giant Eagle. That is the, from the, oh, I believe it was the Wild Shape set number one or number two. I think it was number two for the Wild Shape set for the Druids, Druidic Wild Shapes. Really know why was a hag in the first one, huh? Anyway, getting off that subject, unless you have a question for it down below, maybe I'll, uh, maybe you know why, or maybe you can have a good reason for why a green hag and a koala were in the first wild shape box for this dual set from Wizards. Never made sense to me. Never been interested to get it because of that reason. But anyway, so next to the giant eagle, a giant eagle would definitely work as another life stage in the rocks growth because maybe when they're this size they're considered young like dragons you could literally do it just like dragons ancient being the gargantuan huge being the adult and then maybe like oh when they're you know large class they're young small they're baby rocks because i mean it would work great because luckily with the way whiz kids has released miniatures and how you can still get like uh Eagle minis on rare occasions. Like, those would be the harder ones to get, I guess, are small, medium class eagles or whatever class size. I mean, small or medium. It'd be hard to get them for that. But you could use them to make the whole life stage of the rock. And if someone had, say, found a rock egg and they raised it, not only would it be a very valuable part they could sell if they didn't want to keep it, but if they wanted to raise it as a companion, it could be a really useful tool to create a gigantic flying mount that the whole party could basically ride on the back of and the creature could also transport forms. That'd be a really cool idea, maybe. And then lastly, we have it next to the Mwangi Expanse Owl Lady. Oh, look, I know it has a name. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll say it wrong. I did a review of it with the Mwangi Expanse. Go check that video out if you want to hear me correctly call it that. But for now, I'm just calling it the Owl Lady. Because... Or, you know, Owl Person. Yes, I'm going Rick and Morty style. I'm calling it Owl Person. I'm going to be that lazy. <laughs> Slash, like, I just don't have time to keep reading it multiple times to get it right for you people. But, I gotta say, it's really good next to them. They These birds look like, honestly, they could all be part of a court of avian masters, in a sense. And I like it. Like, I like the Ember Rock for this. But there's one thing the Ember Rock really would be a great thing for. And like I said, that was being a phoenix. I love the versatility of this miniature. You have the ability to be a giant phoenix. The ability to be a giant rock. Or just the ability to be a giant bird in general, magically enhanced. So, like, you know, it's got potential. It ha It's a good miniature. Now, would I recommend paying for its normal price? Mm, at around 60 bucks for what you're getting, you're getting just a giant fiery bird. with, Though with some lovely translucence and paint job, uh, no. I don't think it's worth 60 I think this miniature will be good at... A normal price tag, I think this should be around, I would say, is $49.99. Around 50 bucks. A little bit more after tax, you know what I mean? Depending on where you are. And I think that would be fair for this thing. Making it a whole, like, $69.99 is what I remember it was when it first came out. Yeah, that's way too much. A whole extra $20 for just a good paint job on a simplistic bird. I mean, no offense to the rock. It has the cool tail feathers and stuff. But in honesty, it's still just like a, an eagle in the grab, in the, like, you know, coming down grab motion. How hard is it to make something like that? You know, and I love the, like, feathery, burnt-looking, like, tattered edges on the wings feathers there, you can see. But, like I said, it's not that bad. Because look at the old-school rock right here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to use that as a pointer, and that's stupid. But, um, that bird is kind of doing, like, a sitting-on-a-rock pose. These are all things we've seen eagles doing in nature. So, getting ideas of different poses isn't that hard. Because, I mean, the giant eagle there is doing a simple soaring pose. The Emberjack Rock, on the other hand, um, yeah, not a very common pose for a bird in reality. Like, I don't see birds doing that pose that often, but, you know, Emberjack Rocks are a whole different species of rocks. So since they're a cousin to the rock and they're like specialized in how they were created or bred or whatever, I can't remember the lore form off the top of my head. 
been a while since I did MTG lore for those things. But overall, it looks good. I mean, honestly, you could even have the Mwangi Expanse lady there since she sort of like looks kind of magically shaman-esque for birds. Maybe your group has to do a task for her, and if you succeed, she will offer you the help of the great mighty ember bird, or a great fire bird of the sky who would assist you, and then, say, the ember rock joins you for a battle with the big bat or something like that, and that'd be a cool way to throw it in there and get use out of it. But overall, is it good for the shelf? I think for the shelf it'll look fine. But, I mean, that's if I have shelf space for this big boy. He might go into the simply the uh, giant creatures, like the giant's pet category, because... In truth, he's really a giant bat or a giant elemental if I decide to use him for a phoenix, which I think I'll get more use of him being a phoenix than a sky, than an ember rock. I feel he'll get more use for that. But yeah, overall, I'm going to give this thing, eh, I want to say four stars. You know what? I'd love to say even five stars because for what it is, based on like, you know, books of the rocks and stuff where they're just simply a gigantic eagle, sometimes painted purple. Don't know why that is. That's really creepy. <laughs> it's not like an owl bear, is it? Where it's like for some reason when it was created to turn purple in fifth edition in the book, like it has a weird little tint to it. And I'm like, eh, weird, but no, I think for a rock, this thing's very lovely. It's a very well done. I got to give whiz kids credit. They really do keep stepping up their painting game. Cause I mean, compared to the old school model there, it looks really nice. And like, even like for say instance, the giant Eagle there, that also looks really nice. And I know, like, WizKids doesn't do Mwangi Expanse, but the uh, NECA and Paizo and all them do that, and they make those look nice, too. So, like, I love how the miniature's quality is improving over the years. We're definitely seeing improvement. But, you know, still got to give love to these old classics right there, like the old rock there. Still love that design. Still looks good. Well, anyway, guys, if you come this far in the video, I thank you for watching till the end. Uh, you know, if you want to help and support the channel grow and get more out there, you know, hit that like, in this case, skydive that like button. Smash the subscribe button so you can uh, help the channel grow. And also share with your friends if you think they'd be interested and if you want to help the channel get more viewing out there. And throw a comment down below if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, or if you just want to simply have a question. Or simple like, uh, that's cool, or, you know, eh, not my cup of tea. Whatever. I'll listen to it. I'll answer back. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today, and I'll see you with more upcoming. Bye-bye.